We're back with the Cannibal Murder Family. Yeehaw! Hey everyone, welcome to Princess Gay. I'm your host, Connie, and today we are here with Wrong Turn 2. And, you know, despite what I say in my pre thoughts, or, or my cold open, we're not really back with them, because didn't they all die or did one of them survive i don't remember i thought they all died but it's it's been a couple months since we reacted to the first wrong turn movie and i was kind of i guess you could say mixed on it like there were aspects of it that i thought were really stupid aspects of the film that i just felt like were directed poorly written poorly and the characters' actions, let's be honest, were pretty stupid. Now, some of the kills were pretty good. I will acknowledge that. And there were some parts that, as has had even been pointed out in the comments back then, did catch me off guard. Um, but, overall, the movie wasn't, like, super impressive to me. And it kind of, with the way it ended, it kind of left me wondering... Why and how are there so many sequels to this? Well, I guess we're going to find out today, because Venom, you've done it again. We're here with Wrong Turn 2. I think it's the subtitle of it is called Dead End or something like that. Um, So I, I don't really know anything about this comparative to the first one. If one of the cannibal murder hillbilly family survived, cool? I guess <laughs> I don't know how they would have I don't remember I, I don't remember exactly if it was revealed at the end if one of them survived or not but I I feel like they were all killed pretty like notably <laughs> like unless I'm mistaken um I, I feel like they were all pretty 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 dead from what I remember but it wasn't the most memorable movie, so maybe I am forgetting something. It's altogether possible. So, I assume this is going to be, like, a different set of victims completely. I, I assume that this is not going to take place with the same um, characters as before. Because I think maybe one or two of them did survive at the end, but... It's just, I, I don't think we're going to follow them again. Though I could be wrong, I don't know. I've heard that some of these sequels are better than others, and it's just kind of like a crapshoot for each one. Um, but it's all subjective anyways, as always, so I'll just form my own opinions based on um, my viewing experience. It's what I typically do on the channel. I, I, I don't tend to go towards others' viewpoints because a lot of times I tend to disagree with them. Sometimes I agree, but there's a lot of times I don't. Uh, like with the Argyle movie. That movie was panned by so many people. I loved it. I thought it was fantastic. I do not understand the hate that that movie gets. And then there's a lot of movies that people tend to really love or at least enjoy that I despise, like Teen Titans Go to the Movies. That is legitimately the worst superhero movie I have ever seen. I, I stand by that. In my opinion, of course. It's, like I said, all subjective. But apparently, again, this uh, series is very back and forth. Some movies are good, some are not, and it's just like, I guess other movie series and franchises have had that happen too. I mean, the MCU, I guess, is a good example. Um, or just, I mean, name any long-running horror uh, franchise, I guess you could apply that to that too, to be fair. Um, like the Halloween movies, for example. Some of them are good, some of them not so much. <laughs> Some of them are kind of bad in a very good way, like Halloween H2O. Halloween H2O, it's like, oh yeah, it's stupid. There's some things that just do not work, 
but it's fun to watch. <laughs> I, I enjoy it, at least. Um, but yeah, so I'm, I'm interested to see how this continues and what kind of different things they do and if the kills continue to be creative, at least. Because that's always one thing I look forward to in a lot of horror films, um, especially ones that are going to have a bunch of kills which, if this is like the first one, it's going to. I, I like creative kills. I, I like it when the kills can get really unique and interesting and different, and it's not just all the same thing, like someone getting stabbed in the chest a bunch of times. 27 times in the chest. So, sorry, I, I have brain rot when it comes to Detroit Become Human. <laughs> I'm making a lot of references in this video. Um, but yeah, I, I like it when they're creative and different and unique and they stand out. Th those are the kind of kills I like to see because it allows the creative teams of these movies to flex, not just in terms of, you know, visual effects and whatnot, but in terms of the writing too and, and the acting even, how like the, vi the actors who play the victims, you know, portray that death and all and yeah that's that's always a big um moment for me to see with any kind of horror film that again focuses on this kind of thing some horror films actually don't have a lot if any deaths at all because that's not the kind of horror film it is so <laughs> i have to specify um but this one more than likely will <laughs> So yeah, I'm definitely interested to see like what this one does comparatively and see if it um, improves on some of the issues I had with the first one. That would be cool. But we're going to give it a shot anyways because I'm always willing to give movies a shot. So we're going to get into this, see what it has in store for us, and hope that this wrong turn leads to a right conclusion. That was stupid. Let's get this going. Cutting in here real quick to remind you of all the awesome content we have on the channel. Between Monday and Friday, we have a plethora of awesome series reactions with two on Wednesday. We also have movie reactions every Saturday and Sunday. I do pre-record them during the week, but I upload them on the weekend. And don't forget all the gaming content we have both on this channel and the Secondary Princess of Gaming channel. We have Horizon Forbidden West every other day and Baldur's Gate 3 every single day on this channel, while we also have Near Automata every Saturday on the other. And don't forget to click the link down in the description below to get to today's reaction. I redirect it just due to copyright reasons. And finally, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and like the video if you want to see more awesome content such as this. Thank you so much for tuning in. Let's get on to the reaction. And we are back and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. So from the entire reality show aspect of things and kind of the meta nature of that at first... It, it, this movie was kind of painting itself to not be taking itself too seriously, but it kind of had this turning point where it started taking itself more seriously. And it just, it felt like the first half and the second half of the movie were almost two different tones. Um, there was obviously some stupid moments. Like when the one girl was trying to undo the knot by just pulling aimlessly at the rope it's like ma'am try to undo the knot you're not doing anything by just aimlessly pulling at the rope you're not doing anything and, and i had to go back and rewind uh at that one moment just to make sure like what was what i saw was right and it's like yeah so the the arrow went through the back of her head looked like it went through her eye and into his eye so that's a thing that happened um and on top of everything else 
this movie kind of gave backstory to the cannibal murder family and we we are actively told there's a lot more of them than we've seen so that explains why there's more of them in this movie and why there's going to be more of this family in the others so at the end of the film the one holding the baby was three finger right from the first movie was he in the rest of the film? I, I don't know. It's hard to tell some of them apart I, uh, for me. I don't know if Three Finger was in the movie otherwise. I, I may have just, like, missed him. It's possible, but... Okay. Um... Yeah. This was... Definitely interesting. Like I said, there was a bit of a meta nature with the survivalist show... And Henry Rollins was absolutely the star of this. Like, forget everyone else. Everyone else was just kind of there to die, for the most part, except for the two survivors at the end. Henry Rollins ate up his role. He just absolutely owned it. He was the best part of this, absolutely. Um, I would say, that, like, overall, this movie is probably a little better than the first and part of that was the initial meta nature of it kind of made me see it more as like a almost a satire of these kind of movies um which helped me digest a lot of it better though like i said it did seem to have a tone change and try to become more of a, like a serious horror film in the second half but it, it was still easier to digest kind of taking it in like that um the kill like there were some good kills in this then there were some that just weren't that impressive like honestly like the arrow through the through uh her head into his for the those two who died while strung up boring if we're being honest the one dude being beheaded on the camera and everything boring but then you had like the, some some good kills in there like the dynamite arrows and stuff the the father the patriarch of the family being blown up by with the dynamite in in, in his ass it's like th there was some good the dynamite stuff was really good Let, let's just be honest henry rollins kills were the best <laughs> um so it was kind of a mix of some good kills and some not so good ones um and i can i guess live with that there wasn't as many like like overhead shots of the forest in this one there was like a couple of them but they definitely weren't as like heavy as in the first one with that um and just overall it seemed to be trying to actually like like i said explain things explain where this family came from and stuff but also trying to like make it seem like there's more of a a story to this while the first one was just kind of like let's just bring this in because why not the first one felt a lot more like loose with its writing this one had more like to it that that's the best way i can put it um on top of some of the deaths being anticlimactic i also thought some of the deaths kind of felt how do i put it unsatisfying like i understand like the 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 big survivalist lady the one who's like you know known for kind of doing this stuff and all like i i get the idea of not having her and by extension as well henry rollins character who's also a big survivalist being ex-military having them not survive in the end i get i get the idea there but the way she went out was so fucking unsatisfying like if you had if you just had the guy go out that way jonesy i think his name was um you know the sexist asshole who maybe became like the tiniest smidgen better in the end if he just went out that way that's fine he like that's a deserving death for him 
But her going out that way, like, trying to free him and then kind of, like, stepping into one of the traps herself and then they have, like, a semi-heartfelt moment and then, like, him dying right there made would have made sense and, like, her freaking out and everything, but her dying, like, so anticlimactically and unsatisfyingly there was just, like, really blah. It just felt like a really bad way to end off things for her specifically. Especially since it's like it's focused on his face in that moment. You're only seeing her perspective from the back of her head. It's so unsatisfying. It's so unsatisfying. And then you have the one girl who like, you know, a, a, a short time after seeing her, her boyfriend cheating on her with another girl just dies from getting an axe thrown at her head it's like yay <laughs> another very unsatisfying death um yeah it's not the best movie still it's not like the best horror movie i've seen on the channel or just in general even within this kind of scope um, like, it, I, I, compare, I did a lot of comparison in the first one to Texas Chainsaw. And it's like, Texas Chainsaw 2, specifically, I would say, is much better than either of these first two Wrong Turn movies. Like, notably better. But, I mean, it's not the worst thing. It's not, like, terribly unwatchable. It's just... It's just kind of meh. There's good aspects to it, really good aspects even. But there's also some things that just don't work as well as it, you would like. Um, but hopefully, hopefully uh, number three or other future ones end up just being a lot better. Again, supposedly these movies are kind of back and forth, so we'll see. Um, I don't really have anything else to say about it, though, so if there's anything specific that I didn't talk about that you wanted me to, please feel free to ask in the comments. And if there's anything else you want to mention or ask, please leave those in the comments as well. For now, though, I'm Connie and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.